and I'm Jana, and we want to welcome you to our service this morning at Summit Worship Center. We are so glad that you have joined so us. So happy. So happy. Uh, we want to shout out to our first time guests this morning. If you are a first time guest, if you will put a one in the comments, just write down there in the comments, and then look out because they're going to put a first time guest card down there for you to fill out as well. We would love to hear from you. We would love to know that you are here, and we would love to connect with you. So if you will do that, put a one in the comments. We're going to be looking for you, right? We're yep, gonna we're going to look for you. And uh, we would love to connect with you. So thank you so much for joining us. And then we want to welcome our Summit Worship Center family. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Shout out to all my people this morning. Uh, talk to us in the comments, right? Yeah. Tell us what's up. Let me know you're here. We're so thankful that you're joining us this morning. Uh, and that we get to come together online, even though we're not in person. And I can't hug every single one of you. We get to come together online. And I'm so thankful because really, um, I will say, I'm surprised every week to feel the same uh, connection with everyone that's here. So welcome Summit Worship Family, and we are so thankful that you are here. Um, I wanted to say, if you hear people in the sanctuary, if you hear some shout outs and some amens in the background, there are some people here at the recordings and, and at the service. And that is because we've asked some of our Team Summit members to come and help us to safely uh, think about re-entering in person eventually, whenever, whenever that is. Uh, they're coming to help us to figure out a great and effective and a safe way to do that. So you will hear some people, but don't worry, you haven't missed out, you haven't missed a thing. We will let you know as soon as that is available for everyone. Uh, so thank you so much. And if you're wondering who Team Summit is, Who's Team Summit? Team Summit? What is Team Summit? Uh, are you part of Team Summit? I'm part of Team Summit. I'm part of Team Summit. <laughs> team Summit is a team that we are a part of um, in this church where we get to come and we get to serve with our gifts, our time, our talent, whatever we have to offer to just pour into the community here, pour into the things that are in the background, that are right in front of the camera. There's so much that goes into uh, just being a part of church services and things around here that we get to be, we have the privilege yeah. of being a part of Teen Summit. And I'm telling you, it is so much fun. I have met some of the most amazing people and um, it's it's never, never dull. dull. I know, it's right? never dull. So uh, Teen Summit is where it's at. And speaking of um, just connecting with other people, why don't y'all go ahead and share this on your timeline. Do it. Um, tag a couple of friends in the tag comments. Them. Invite them to come and watch the service with us. With us. Um, and then also like and subscribe. Subscribe yeah. to our Facebook. We have a YouTube channel. We just want to connect with you all and see you all more. Yeah, yep. So speaking of everything online, did you know that between 8.30 and 8.45 on Sunday morning, we have preschool, elementary, and youth classes that are posted, uh, videos that are posted. It's their own service. They can go and watch. Um, so look out for those on Facebook, and youth also has theirs on Instagram. So go check them out. Um, it's just for them. It's tailored to their ages, and they will get their full services there as well, and they don't want to miss it. And while we're talking about our preschool, I have the privilege. Pri privilege of serving in there and um, I have to shout out to some of my babies so I want to shout out to uh, Devin and Devin you know who you are I love you I love you so much and then Mr. Miles he has always this serious face so he used to crack me up because no matter how much I would try to make him smile he had a serious face but then every once in a while I would get a little grin a little and bit. so I miss him so much shout out to Miles and then it wouldn't be a great day without shouting out to my friend Ren What's up, Ren? We're so thankful that you're a part of our family. Uh, I have so much fun in preschool. I just had to give those few little shout outs. Awesome. One thing I love about the preschoolers having their own service is that it tailors to them. And they're able to grow in Christ as young people. Yeah. And that is so important here in this house. That's one of our pillars here at Summit is to grow in Christ. Yeah. And I, that is one thing that I take so seriously is that my relationship has with God has really bloomed since I've um, become a member here. And so, yeah. So I am just going to mention really quick here um, something that has been on my mind since Pastor has started this Kingdom series. Oh, so good. Hasn't it been amazing? Been Have good. you all had a chance to hear the Kingdom series that has been going on for the past few weeks? Well, last week, he talked about how we all have a kingdom calling. I think he even had a shout it out in the notes. I have a kingdom calling. And it really rung really loud and clear with me that instead of focusing on all the things going on around us, we have a kingdom calling. We have something greater to look at and to be a part of. So um, he mentioned that 
just as the mannequins are dressed in the storefronts and they are attracting people into the store to buy those things, we should be attracting people with all the things that we're living out in our calling, attracting them to the kingdom of God. And so that's really hitting home with me. It's really resonating and I'm so grateful for this series at such a time as this. I know, it's been amazing. And like you said, it really helps to refocus you. Yeah. And then one way that we can really help refocus is through life groups. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all, join life groups. You, this, now is the perfect time to join. You literally can join from anywhere because all of them are virtual. Anywhere. How convenient. It is. It's right. Amazing. And so I've had the opportunity to co-lead one of our um, college and young adults life groups, whoop, whoop. which is, you know, 18 to 35, both single and married. And y'all, it has been phenomenal. Yep. We've seen people come back to Christ. We've seen people join Summit. Um, we even had a virtual game night. And let me oh tell my you, goodness. Taboo virtually <laughs> is just as intense as I it is in can imagine. I can imagine. I just encourage you to just get plugged in. Go to summitatx.org. Um, review the list of groups and y'all get in plugged in today. Get plugged in. And guys, we have been asking you to send in your stories and we have some amazing stories this amazing week. Amazing stories. So thanks for coming through on the stories. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about Nate V. He is our music director. You've seen him play in the keys, killing it every week. And we're so grateful he's here. Guys, he has uh, was a songwriter on a gr Latin Grammy nominated album in the rock pop category. Isn't that incredible? Awesome. That Woo, is Nate. incredible. We are so proud of you, Nate. Y'all yeah. shout out to Nate in the comments. We are so glad to be a part of your journey and what God is doing in your life and thankful to celebrate with you. And um, we have another one. Um, and it's Tiffany Spicer. Oh. And if you remember her, she used to come in person, but now she is a part of our online community as she has moved away. But isn't it cool? She can still be a part. Uh, yeah. Uh, her story is incredible. So she had a plan. She had a plan for where to live. She had a plan for a job. She had a plan for, uh, you know, everything, you know, all the things. All the things. Right? All the things. We always have a plan. But God had his plan. Mm -hmm. And so he changed up her plan. Uh, he provided for her. And as she sought a job, he gave her not only a better job than she had hoped for, but the number two spot in the school district. I mean, it is an amazing job with an yeah. amazing crew. He took care of her house closing. He took care of every financial detail. I think there was some paying off of debt happening. I mean, yeah. just incredible testimony of God's faithfulness. And she wanted to shout out to single moms to also just encourage you that God is faithful when you don't yeah. know what's going on, when you don't understand, maybe uh, just continue to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So Tiffany, thank you so much for sharing your story. We want to hear more stories. If you have one, send it to us at stories at summitatx.org. We would love to hear it. Or you can send it to us on social media. So cool. Love to what hear the stories. What an amazing testimony. Yeah. Y'all, we have just a couple of announcements for you. Happening tonight um, for the parents of Summit Youth and Kids, there will be a parent meeting happening tonight. Um, you can visit summitatx.org or you can go to the Church Center app to register for that and find out all the information that you need. Mm -hmm. Also, November 14th, save the date. There will be a blood drive happening on that date. Um, you'll receive more information in the time to come, but just keep an eye and ear out for that. Lastly, do you remember the last Radical warm-up call for the radical, ladies? Radical. Radical went off, y'all. It was amazing. Oh, my goodness. It literally blew me away. Yeah. Um, this is a free event for the women um, all over. You don't have to be a member of Summit. And, y'all, we just had such an amazing time. Um, if, let's, watch a, let's watch a recap video yeah. real quick. Let's do it. Go to the top. I'm going to give it all I got. We've got some fun coming up soon. Your next this or that is night out or a night in. What's it going to be, Pastor Andrea? Okay, I think I'm with Reese. It's a night in for me. What you got, Deidre? I love nights in, but I've had quite a few of those, so I would definitely go with a night out. So excited to be with you. Many of us tonight, I'm believing God's going to speak to us. And this time, we're going to talk about resting radically. And one day, I remember laying in my bed, sick and distraught, and I just began crying out to God. And he listened to me and allowed me to vent. And then he would say something that I'll never forget. Rest. I've got this. Just getting rest helps you, your body to grow, to regenerate itself. That we will find this radical rest. Press in, let him mark you. Let him mark you with his rest over your babies, over your marriages, over yourself. Let him mark you. Love you. 
Oh my goodness, that was amazing. Did you, could y'all feel that? Like yeah. I felt it, it was amazing. It makes me look forward to the next one. I know, the next one is happening November 8th Ooh. at 4.30. You can visit um, summitatx.org or the Church Center app to register. Ladies, you don't want to miss it. Don't miss it. And lastly, with it, as we're kicking off the Thanksgiving holiday, the Thanksgiving season, um, we want to just take this week to honor an educator. So whether you're our coach, a youth life group leader, um, a teacher, a paraprofessional, a secretary, whatever, however All you're serving in the education field, we want to honor you and bless you on this week. So if you could drop your name down below in the comment section, we just want to say thank you in this Thanksgiving season for all the work that you're doing with this next generation. Um, and we love you guys. We love you. So grateful. Okay, guys, we have three simple ways to give. Just want to shout them out real quick. You can text to give, super simple. That's usually what I do. You can go to the Church Center app and you can do it on there very quickly, very easy, or on our website at summitatx.org and there's a giving link. Go ahead and go there. Um, well, I think that we are ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm so ready to worship. Mm -hmm. Let's turn our hearts and our eyes and our minds to Jesus. Let's get ready to um, just really focus and pour our love out on Him. I cannot wait, and I, I have been ready after this week to just get into it. I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Bye, y'all. Have a great week. Bye. What's up, Summit Worship Center? I said, what's up, Summit? Right now, I want everybody, no matter where you are, come on, get on your feet and help us praise Jesus tomorrow. Help us praise Jesus today. Come on. You make a blind man see. You make a lame man walk again. You cause the dead to rise. And that's why we dance in liberty. Do it all again.
turned your morning into dancing. Come on, lift up a praise to him this morning. Give him praise. Sing it out loud like this. Sing it out. Sing. You turn morning to dancing. You get beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory.
You know, sometimes we have to command ourselves to worship Him. Because sometimes our bones don't feel like it. And sometimes we got to tell ourselves, you will worship the Lord for your breakthrough. As we continue on with this next song, I invite you and encourage you to get lost in the freedom that is yours in Jesus.
Hey, what a great time that we could worship together, right? Even right here in our living rooms. Hey, welcome to Summit Worship Center. And if you're a first time guest with us, could you please put a one in the comments? We'd love to just say hi and welcome. Also, there are three ways you can give here at Summit and you can follow the link on, uh, that's given on the bottom of the screen there. Also, would you please uh, put your prayers into the link as well there at the bottom? Uh, we want to be praying with you, we want to agree with you, and, and really just cover you in prayer during this time. Hey, if you haven't already signed up for a life group, please go to summitatx.org and sign up for a life group. It doesn't matter where you are, you, where everything is virtual, so please sign up for a life group and get connected. Uh, also, in the comments, make sure you're putting in your amens, your fire emojis, your clapping hands, your praising hands, whatever it is. Uh, talk with your friends, welcome everybody, and just make sure you're active in the comments. And I'm really excited that we get to hear the next sermon from Pastor Eric from the Kingdom series. Here we go. Good morning, Summit. What's 
What's going on? This is Eric, and it's just so glad to be with you here this morning. I want to give a big shout out to all of our first time guests. Thank you so much for joining in with us and, and our Summit family. We love you. We miss you. We're praying for you. And uh, we're just so excited about what God is doing in our lives and also allowing us to really partner with him and seeing his kingdom advance on the earth. Uh, as you have been with us, you've heard us talk about the importance of life groups, the importance of us building community. And I said this last week, and I want to say it again this week just for us to continue to remind ourselves and chew on it. As the church, I do believe that God wants us to prioritize. Last week I said focus. But I, this week I want to change it up, that word, to prioritize active discipleship. God wants the church to prioritize active discipleship, the importance of you and I. As a follower of Jesus Christ, God didn't give us the great suggestion. He gave us the great commission. And the great commission is go, therefore, and make disciples. That means pour your life into someone else. Uh, encourage them in their relationship with Jesus Christ. Encourage them to become all that God has called them to be, active discipleship. Matter of fact, I even want you to type that out in the chat, even right now, active discipleship. God called you not just to be a disciple, but also to be a disciple maker. So God doesn't want, he wants us to focus and prioritize on active discipleship, but also building community. You're not called to do this by yourself, not called to be a long ranger. That grace is not on your life. That gift is not on your life as a child of God. But God has called you to really build community. And how we build community here within our Summit family is through life groups. And so we've been on this journey talking about the seven reasons to join a life group. And I'm just going to go through them real quick, and we're going to talk about our fifth number here today, fifth one today. Uh, number one was fellowship. Number two was sharing God's work. Number three was support. Last week, we talked about the importance of planting and watering. And this week, we're going to talk about number five here is this, building on the word of God. Building on the word of God. Because the reality is this, all of us, um, whether we know it or not, because we are created in the image of God, we are um, graced by God to be a builder. We are made in his image and in his likeness. And when I, last time I checked, my God is a builder. And since I am created in his image and his likeness, that gift is on me to build. So I can be either, I can either be building something good or I can be building something not so good, but the, it doesn't negate the fact that I am building something. Because we are builders because our creator is the master builder. And so it's important for us to build our lives on the word of God. And so 2 Timothy 3.16 says this, that all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So within a life group context, what it is is brothers and sisters are coming together to talk about the word, to chew on the word, to allow the word to read them. To allow the word to give us revelation that will produce conviction, that will bring about faith so that we can walk in a kingdom way. And so we have to build our lives on the word of God, build our families on the word of God, build our marriages on the word of God. And so how we do that is in the context of life groups, we talk about the word, we chew on the word, we wrestle with the word. And so I want to I encourage you here this morning. It's important for you to be in a life group because, again, the, this is an opportunity of how God builds. He builds through his people coming together and doing life together. So even as the link is coming up, um, go to summitatx.org, sign up and, and join a life group so that we can continue to grow and be who God has called us to be. Amen? amen. Come on, type that out. Amen. I'm excited. Let's turn our Bibles here. Uh, to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 9 through 16. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 16. We've been on this series about kingdom, talking about the kingdom of God and really looking at that the kingdom is our new address. We are citizens of the kingdom. And one of the things that we've been looking at is, is, is talking about the importance about how the kingdom of God is available to us in the here and now. Jesus, when he first stepped onto the scene, his first message was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, the kingdom of God is within your reach. And so even as we looked at last week, the question is not, is the kingdom of God available to us? The question is, is whether we are available to the kingdom. And I want to remind us here this morning that God is inviting all of us on the greatest adventure of our lives. And that is this, to pursue with passion the kingdom of God and his kingdom agenda. For Matthew 6, 33 tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. The, the most important thing for you and I to on a daily basis is not what we're going to get, not what kind of shine we're going to receive, but the most important thing in our lives is on an everyday basis is to seek first the kingdom. Because if we seek first the kingdom, everything else will be added unto us. If we seek first the kingdom, this nation is going to be all right. If we seek first the kingdom, our marriages will be all right. If we seek first the kingdom, we will fulfill God's purpose and plan for our life. But we first have to seek the kingdom. So last week we looked at the importance of us having a kingdom calling. Type that out, kingdom Calling. I even dare you, even everyone that's here, I want you to say kingdom calling. Kingdom we all have a kingdom calling. As citizens of the, season, of, the, of the kingdom, God has graced us all with a purpose and a calling. So last week we looked at that and we talked about that the kingdom of calling is this. I just want to recap a little bit so we can continue to build upon this. It is the customized life purpose that God has ordained and equipped us to accomplish. There's a calling on your life and it's customized. It's a customized life purpose that God has ordained and equipped us to accomplish in order. So my purpose in life is not just to make money just to be making money or to be an entrepreneur just to be an entrepreneur. Or to have children and raise a family and all those different things just to be doing it for the sake of doing it. But there's a purpose behind it. And this purpose is to do things in order to bring God the greatest glory and achieve the maximum expansion of his kingdom. What is the purpose behind what you're doing? Is the purpose behind what you're doing, is it to bring glory to God and expand his kingdom? If that's not the purpose, then you're not operating in your calling. And amen, nobody. So kingdom calling, when we looked at three things last week, number one is customized, it's unique, right? What God has for you and the calling on your life, only you can fulfill it. And not, as I said last week, and I want to continue to remind us, God doesn't make duplicates. He makes originals. You are original. So number one, kingdom calling is customized. Number two, now understand this. You can't create your own calling. You can't, you can't create. I know you like T.D. Jakes and you want to hoop and holler like T.D. Jakes. But if the creator who created you didn't give you that calling, all you're trying to do is duplicate what you see on TV. Instead of you being in tune to what the creator is speaking and called you to do. And so we got to learn how to listen. Listen to the call of our God because he is the one who has created us with this calling. So that's number two. So pursue listening to God's call. And number three is this. We got to be dedicated to the call. Because this call is going to cost you something. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you something. Uh, I, I, if you're going to be uh, who God has called you to be, you have to be okay being uncomfortable. 
You have to be okay being uncomfortable, so you have to be dedicated to the call because the only significance of life consists in helping to establish the kingdom of God. People have all the kind of money in the world, have all the things in the world, and they're still unfulfilled. Why? Because fulfillment happens when you are building the kingdom of God. Because as believers, here this morning, and if you agree with this, and when I say this, I need you to type out amen. If you're here, I need you to even shout amen when I say this. Because as kingdom people, we were never meant to be normal. You were never meant to be normal. Stop trying to be in the in crowd. You're not called to be in the in crowd. You're not called and created to be normal. We were never meant to be normal. We've always been. And when we look throughout history, as we read and we say there's such a great cloud of witnesses, as we read the Bible, every person that God had called to do great things were always some holy troublemakers. It's like the late Senator John Lewis. He, he said, man, if you're going to get in some trouble, get in some good trouble. We were always called to be holy troublemakers, to turn things upside down for the glory of God. But also we have been created to be creators of uncertainty. <laughs> Agents of a dimension that is incompatible with the status quo. This is who we are. For we don't accept the world as it is, but we extend our faith and believe and live with a passion to see our, our world become the way that our God desires it to be. So even when I said we were, we were never meant to be normal, everyone shouted out amen. Everyone clapped and everyone said we were never created to be a, a, a part of the status quo. If that is the truth, is that your reality? Is that your reality here this morning that you know, okay, yes, I know that I was, I was created never be, to be normal, but when you look at your life, are you living a normal life? Are you operating in the status quo? Are you just trying to live with peace instead of being a holy troublemaker? Because what God has called us to do is to turn this world upside down. As Pastor Derek prayed even a little bit earlier, he, he has said that our desire is to make his name famous. But to make his name famous means that we have to be okay without being normal. So what is it that keeps us from walking in this grace and anointing that is on our lives as citizens of the kingdom. The title of my message here this morning that I want us to look at, that it all comes down to our mindset. We're not operating as in who God has called us to be as kingdom people because of our mindset. Matter of fact, I would even put this out for you to consider here this morning that our greatest problem is not what we do. I, I, I want you to listen. I want, our greatest problem is not what we do. But our greatest problem is how we think. Our greatest problem is not what we do, but our greatest problem is how we think. Why? Because in order to transform what we do, come on, I got some preachers in here. We first have to transform how we think. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word this morning. We ask God now that you would speak through me and let your word fall on fertile ground and let it produce fruit a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. So here Paul is preaching to the, the church in Corinth and, 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 and he's talking about the importance of us having the right mindset. 
Because when Jesus comes into our lives, we, we say that we are new creations. We are a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. And behold, new things. We say it, but it's not our reality. And Paul is here is wanting to talk to the church. And Corinthians wanting to talk to us here this morning about us understanding this new mindset that we have, this kingdom mindset. And so in verse 9, he says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, He says, but just as it is written, things which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard and which has not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us, he's talking to you and I, God revealed them through the spirit for the spirit searches All things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thought of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from God so that we may know the things freely given to us by God with which we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Verse 14, but a natural man does not accept the things of the spirit Of God, for they are foolish to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one, by one, by no one. Sorry. Verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord? That he will instruct him. This next phrase, but we have, says we have, not you got to work for, not you got to think about it, but if you are in Christ Jesus, the, the promise is here this morning, but we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of the one who was tempted at all points as we are, yet he did not sin. We have the mind of Christ inside of us. We have the mind of the one who is full of all wisdom, authority, power, intelligence, knowledge, all of those things. We have that inside of our lives. And what we need to talk about and consider here this morning is that in order for us to be citizens of the kingdom, because on one end we can say we have the mind of Christ, yet we have to extend our faith to develop the mind of the king. So we can, I mean, I've said that before. I got the mind of Christ, yet kept living as a natural man. Because confession without commitment is deception. I said, confession without commitment is deception. We need to develop the mind of the king. We need to have a kingdom way of thinking because as Proverbs 23, 7 says this, as a person thinks within himself. I got some church folks in here. So we're talking about this. We're talking about the kingdom. And last week we we're talking about that we have a kingdom calling. But we cannot operate in our kingdom calling if we don't have a kingdom mindset. So in order to fulfill our purpose, we have to develop the mind of the king. Because our greatest problem is not in what we do, but our greatest problem is how we think. 
So what are some few things that we can talk and discover here this morning that can help us develop this kingdom mindset, the mind of a king, to go work out in the spiritual gym, to develop the muscles to think like our king. Number one is this. Number one, we have to recognize at the very beginning that it's not even close. It's not even close. I'll give you an example. Um, you know, a lot of times in growing up, you know, it was a big thing to be the fastest kid in the neighborhood. So it was a big thing to be the fastest kid in the neighborhood. And so sometimes you would have kids from different neighborhoods come and they would ride their bikes over into our neighborhood just for one purpose. To race. Your fastest person in the hood come over to our neighborhood and we're going to race. And whoever wins has the bragging rights. You know, the funny thing would be this. You get in a race and let's say, let's say I'm running and I win and I barely win. The closer the race is, the more it gives that person who lost an opportunity for excuses and why they didn't win. See, when it's, when, it's, when it's a big gap, there's no room for conversation. But when it's close, then I can say, well, uh, my shoes were untied. I can throw all of these different reasons of why I lost the race. Do you think sometimes we do that with God? Because at the end of the day, the flesh wants to be its own God. And so when I lower his standard to the where the gap is between his authority, who he is, his holiness, when it's a close gap, when I think that his ways are just like my ways, and his thoughts are just like my, when it's close. <laughs> when it's close. I use any excuse possible for me to try to supersede his authority and use and operate in my own authority. But the Bible tells us here this morning that it's not even close. Isaiah 55, let's go there. Isaiah 55, because you don't believe me, but I'm about to show you. Isaiah 55, chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. God makes it very plain. And in order for us to have a kingdom mindset, to have the mind of Christ and to operate in it and see the experience and to experience the mind of Christ in our daily lives, we got to know it's not even close. God says this because he wants to make it very plain. My thoughts, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. I, I need you to understand, it's not close. My thoughts are not your thoughts. How you handle arguments and conflicts and how you go in and because you're going in already with your, your lawyer mentality and you ready just to win the battle and you got every return for every comment that's my thoughts are not like your thoughts and my ways are not like your ways declares the Lord. He put lordship, master, king. And then he even gives us a great picture. For as high, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are 
my ways higher than your ways. Why is this important? Because what we sow in our mind will eventually come out through our mouth. All that we see in right now is just the evidence of what's been going on in people's minds. Because what I sow in my mind will eventually come out through my mouth, my hands, and my feet because my body will always express what's in my mind. Always. And if we're going to operate as kingdom people, we have to develop the mind of the king. And in order to understand and develop the mind of the king, you got to understand first, it's not even close. His ways and his thoughts are so much higher that you can't even attain it in your own natural wisdom. <laughs> So what is the key? What is the key? The key is this, that we need to transform our thoughts and bring our mind under the authority of the king of the kingdom. It means that even as 2 Corinthians, I believe it's uh, chapter uh, 10, verse 5, we need to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. We need, to, we need to purge, as uh, Romans tells us, right, to transform and to have our minds renewed by the word of God. We, we need the word to wash out all this filthiness. And all of us got it. Don't look. Look straight ahead. Look at the TV. Don't look to the left or right. We all have to bring our thoughts under the authority of of our king and understand that his thoughts and his ways are so much higher than our ways. So I got to ask myself this question. Self? Whose thoughts and whose ways am I operating in? When it comes to my marriage, whose thoughts, whose ways? When it comes to raising my kids, whose thoughts, whose ways? When it comes to my fellow man, whose thoughts? And whose ways are we operating in? We cannot be kingdom people without the mind of the king. So number one, it's not even close. Y'all good with me? Y'all here with me? Number one. Number two is this. Balance. If we're going to be kingdom people, we have to live a balanced life. Let's go to the text, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's read verses 9 through 11. It says, but just as it is written, things which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard, which has not entered in the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us, kingdom people, those who have a relationship with Jesus, for to us, God reveals... Remember, we were talking about earlier before, the things that God has. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man. All that God has prepared for them. Purpose, destiny. Verse 10, for to us, God revealed them. What did he reveal? What was in chapter, I mean, verse 9? The plans that God has for you. He reveals them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Here we're talking about balance. 
Paul here points to that a kingdom mind can grasp things that are outside the normal limitations of the human senses because it is illuminated by the spirit. Here's the balance. I see in my own life, I say I'm kingdom man. But yet what control me is my senses. What controls me is what I feel, what I see, what I smell, what I touch. These senses that God has given us, and it's good, but it's not balanced. Because as a spiritual man, (laughs) the natural man lives by his senses. The spiritual man or woman lives by the spirit and lives through the revelation of the spirit. See, he says this, for to us, God revealed them through the spirit. Because all good things that God has for us in this life are beyond our senses. So what is, what is revelation when we talk about revelation? Revelation is this divine assistance. It is the assistant given to us to help us see life as it really is. So we can think from a kingdom perspective with kingdom thoughts and live kingdom lives. See, in the midst of all that's going on right now, if you live off by what you see, tell me the fruit that's coming out of your life. If you're operating off of what you see or what you hear, anybody anxious? Anybody afraid? Anybody been speaking death instead of speaking life over themselves, over our nation? The spiritual man or the spiritual woman doesn't live solely off of what he sees, but they live off the balance of what they see, but greater even what they see through the revelation that is given to them by the Holy Spirit. Because it is through the lens of the Holy Spirit, the revelation, these spiritual glasses, that the Spirit of God gives us divine assistance in how to navigate through life's challenges so that we can live a kingdom way. People may not treat me with honor and respect, but as a kingdom man, the Holy Spirit gives me the lens to see that even in how they come at me, that's still God's child. (laughs) Yeah, I'm on your corner. I'm coming down the street. So even in the midst of it, my response to them is not based off of what I see or even how it makes me feel. Because I can take what I feel, take it to the one who can heal me of the wound of that, 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 that thing came at me and tried to attack me with. So that and when I take it to him, he can give me his yoke. So instead of turning evil for evil, I can return a blessing. And that only comes through living a balanced life where you're getting the revelation and the guidance from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> this, is, this is how we develop. This is how we have to develop a kingdom mindset. Well, I'm just going to give them a piece of my mind and come at me that way. You're living as a natural man. John 16 says this. Y'all love me. Y'all know I love y'all. John 16 says this. Verse 13. Talks about the Holy Spirit. Jesus is saying this. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own initiative, but whatever he hears. 
So when the Spirit of God speaks to you and he leads you, whatever he's leading you and speaking to you, he's not speaking of himself. He's speaking of what he is receiving from the Son. For Jesus says he will not speak of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose. He will reveal it to you. Revelation. To you what is to come. He will glorify me. God, so in my mindset, in what is coming in my mind and coming out my mouth, coming out my action, does it glorify? That's what God wants me to do. Okay. And what you're doing, is it glorifying God? Does it glorify God? He says he will glorify me and he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has in mind, therefore I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. Without the mind of Christ. And if you are in Christ Jesus, Jesus says this, repent for the kingdom of of heaven is at hand. It is within your reach. It is within your reach to operate with the mind of Christ. It's within your reach. I mean, it's, it's, it's right there. It's right there. But if we don't have revelation, and if we're just living off of what we see, what we hear, our vision will always be blurry because we don't have the right glasses on. So kingdom mindset, okay? Kingdom, y'all, y'all good? Kingdom mindset. It's not even close. If we're going to develop this kingdom mind, we got to understand it's not even close. His thoughts are so much higher than my thoughts. His ways are so much higher than my ways. It's not even the gap. It, 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 it can't even be a, I can't even touch it. I can't even come close. But two, I got to be balanced. I got to live out of the revelation from the Holy Spirit. So that when I do that, then I can, this last point is this. I can operate with a kingly perspective. A kingly perspective. You know, back in the day, I think, man, I don't know when this was happening. But, you know, back in the day, it was the big thing about the WWJD bracelets. Can I tell y'all something? I had that WWJD bracelet and wasn't thinking nothing about WWJD. It was just cool. It was because if you don't have the revelation, all it is is religion. So I was worried about how many colors can I get? Can I get this color that match with this color and all the... But really what what WWJD is this? It is this, having a kingly perspective. Look at this, what Paul says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses uh, 14 and 15. He says this, I got to go back to it. 1 Corinthians, he says, but a natural man, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. I mean, I know the Bible says forgive, but I just can't. Natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. Meaning, appraises mean examines or questions. But he who is spiritual questions all things. Yet he himself is questioned by no one. For he has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. A kingdom mind, I need you to write this down. A kingdom mind looks at all reality 
from a spiritual or kingly perspective. A kingdom mind. We have the mind of Christ. We need to develop the mind of the king. So we got to go in the gym and we got to work this thing out. A kingdom mind looks at all reality from a spiritual or kingly perspective. So a kingdom mind, a kingdom person, this is what, this is what we have to believe God for. This is what we got to walk in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, that it is him who gives us the power and the authority and the ability to walk this out kingdom mind when faced with a decision will raise certain questions before they act you know we used to say like you know you think first and ask questions later what that means is that you act first and then once in the middle of acting then you ask questions have you ever done that yeah don't tell on yourself but anyway so a kingdom mind when we have a kingdom mind, before we react, we will ask ourselves these questions. Number one, we'll ask ourselves this. What does the king think about this? Before I hit post, what does the king think about this? Before I cut that person off, what does the king think about this because we're citizens of a kingdom and if we're citizens of a kingdom we have a king who rules and reigns with all authority and he has the authority and power to establish the culture of the kingdom so what does the king think about this number two is this how would the king react to this How would the king react to being misunderstood? How would the king react to being lied on, to be lied on? How would the king react in being celebrated? How would the king act in being honored? How would the king react to this? And then the third thing would be this. What does the king want me to do here? See, as kingdom people, we have to develop a kingly perspective. Meaning that our worldview, our perspective. Remember, we talked about earlier and we shouted earlier that we, weren't caught, we were not called to be normal. We were called to be different, to be set apart. And when I look at my king, he was different. He was set apart. He loved on people that the culture say don't touch. He loved on them. He touched them. Those who were caught up in different sins, people were trying to kill them. He stepped in the gap covered them, stood up for them and said, he who without sin, let him cast first stone. And they all left. And then he says, hey, do you see your accuser? She said, no. He said, I don't accuse you either. Go, sin no more. That's not normal. In the midst of him being lied on, beaten, being to the point where you couldn't even recognize who he was. Put a crown of thorns on his head. Had made him carry this cross up this hill. Put nails in his hands and in his feet. I don't think any of us have been to that point of in the midst of it. In the midst of it. He says, Father, forgive them, for 
for they know not what they do. That's a kingly perspective. And if we're going to be kingdom people with a kingdom mind, when they were looking for him and they wanted to make him king, they wanted to put him on a pedestal, he somehow, some way, that's one of the questions I'm going to ask Jesus. Like, how did you get out of a crowd? The scripture says, like, you got out of a crowd. Like, no one would notice who you were. I want to know. Like, how did you get out of a crowd? When they was about to puff him up, he got out of the crowd and went to a secluded place to go commune with his father. I want to be, I want a kingly mindset. And I'll be first to say, I'm not operating in it 100%. But when I look at the scripture tells me that we have the mind of Christ, that means every day I have an opportunity to develop the mind of the king by going in the spiritual gym and understand with humility is not even close. Every day submitting my thoughts, my ways, yielding them to the authority of his lordship. Living a balanced life where I'm not just operating by what I see, but I'm asking God to give me the revelation so that I can have the spiritual glasses to see things how they really are so that I can operate with a kingly perspective. We have the mind of Christ. But every day we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling to develop the mind of the king. And if you're here this morning and maybe you don't know Jesus, you don't have a relationship with him, and I want to invite you. I want to invite you to know about my Savior, my King, who died for my sins, who died for your sins, and whose desire is for you to know love that will set you free. I want to pray for you. I want to pray. For us, I want to pray for those because remember at the beginning I said our greatest problem is not what we do. Some of you think because of what you did that it has disqualified you from being in relationship with this Jesus that we talk about and even for you to operate with a purpose that would reveal the glory of God on this earth. That's too much even for you to understand because your thought process, you don't know what I did. I want to tell you, you don't know what he did so that you could be free, so that you could be whole. Because this is what it's all about. It's not about the lights, the music, and all that. It's about your soul. It's about you coming to know Jesus and you discovering as he, as he has, as you are still here on this earth, you're on this earth because he has purpose for your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this word this morning. I ask, Lord, that, God, you search all of our hearts. God, even in the midst of all that's, that's going on in our own personal lives, but just even throughout culture and throughout this nation, even just all over the world. I pray, Lord, as kingdom people, let us have a kingdom mindset. Change the way we think. Let us stop on the Lord a standard to try to make it as close as we can so we can really do what we want to do. But Lord, let us see that it's not even close, that your ways and your thoughts are so much higher in the world's ways. And I ask Holy Spirit that you would be 
this alive in our lives that we will not just live by what we see, but we will live through the revelation that comes through the Holy Spirit so that we can live with this kingly perspective. Change our worldview. God, let it, even as you tell us, Lord, that you would write your word upon our heart, that you would be our God and we would be your people. And I pray for those that even that, that don't even know you, Jesus. I pray, Lord, that even as your word tells us, that it is the love of God that leads us to repentance. Lord, let them click on this link and let us let them uh, continue to have the conversation about what is salvation all about. What does that mean? Give them the gift of repentance and change their mindset where they don't see repentance as just some, this bad, awful thing. But really, repentance is a gift to life. Lord, help us, God. We love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here, hey, there's a link coming up. If you need prayer, hit that link. If you made a decision, hit that link. I'm just, you know, this whole series is just like, man, just like hit me upside the head in a good way. In a good way. Checking my mindset, checking my heart. And my prayers for all of us, everyone that's listening, that we will extend our faith to develop the mind of the king. Because when you have the mind of the king, you can speak to that mountain and tell it to be moved when you have the mind of the king. You can love those who are not loving you when you have the mind of the king. You're able to do supernatural things in a natural world when you have the mind of the king. Let us extend our faith and walk in his grace and develop the mind of our king. I love you, praying for you, standing with you, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. Wow, Summit. Everybody do me a favor, look down. Are your toes okay? My toes are cut up right now. That was, that was a good, challenging word. It's one of those messages where you really have to do a really good gut check, self-check in the mirror. Um, and I love messages like this. Um, having a kingdom mindset and all that that entails. So thank you, uh, Pastor Eric, for that powerful word. And we hope that you were impacted. Um, no matter where you are, we hope that this message has impacted your life um, in a major way. I know it has mine. Uh, it's good stuff to be thinking about all throughout the week. And like Pastor said, if you want to make a decision to be in a relationship, not religion, but a relationship uh, with Jesus, please click the decision link. Um, if you need prayer for anything at all, we would love to stand with you, to pray with you. There's a prayer link. We're going to put it up again a second time uh, for you guys. And one more time, community. Get in community. You, we were not made to do this life alone. We're going to put the life group link in. If you haven't yet, please, please, please find community and one of our life groups. Summit family, we love you guys. We hope you have a great, great week. We're praying for you. We're here for you if you need anything. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.